Welcome to the Thick and Mystic Moment, the show that's all about uncovering the secrets of personal transformation and celebrating the incredible stories of those who've dared to change their lives. I'm your guide, Robert John Hadfield, and together we'll explore the power of change. Let's get started. Eleanor Roosevelt is famous for saying that we should do something that scares us every day. And I have this, I have this great story that I'm going to tell you about and that, that it really plays into the thing that we talk about in here every day and, the, and this whole idea of doing something that scares you every day. When we meet here, we talk about something that I refer to as the thick and mystic moment. And what that is, is it's this idea that your life is going this direction and then suddenly it's going this direction. And if you look back at your life, you can really, you can find these all over the place. Sometimes they're really big, dramatic things, and sometimes they're small things that change direction in a small way. And and they often start off with, you know, there was this one time that blah. And, and if you spent a, a, a few minutes, you could probably go back and just start noticing all these different things that have happened to you over the years where where your life made a, made a sudden change. And there's two kinds of changes. I want to go over this real quick. There's two types of changes in our life. They're the changes that are forced on us that you you can't do anything about. For example, a really good example, a really good example of this is you wake up in the morning, going through your normal routine, and you you show you show up to work, and then you find out that you're getting laid off. And your life was was very predictable up to that moment. Your life is going this direction, and suddenly Now your life's going this direction and you have to figure out how to navigate that situation. That's a kind of change that is imposed, is forced on you. The other kind of change is the change that you impose on yourself. And that's the change where the the example that we give a lot in here is the change where you decide you're going to go on a diet or you're going to start a new exercise routine. And Unlike that other kind of change that's that's forced on you, this is one that you impose on yourself. And whether or not the change happens is entirely up to you. And this is why we talk about this whole idea of commitment, which is the which my definition for commitment is following through with a decision even when you don't feel like it anymore. Because for example, if you decide boy, I'm going to start working out. I'm going to start every single day. I'm going to get about five o'clock from now on and I'm going to get up and I'm going to go running or I'm going to go to the gym or whatever it happens to be. And then five o'clock in the morning shows up the next day and suddenly you don't want, you don't want to get out of bed. And we've probably all experienced this kind of thing before. And it's it, once that excitement is gone, you have to have that commitment to, to follow through and actually do what you said you were going to do. And, and really, a lot of these things come down to this thing that we all know about, which is called your comfort zone. And of course, when a, for, a change is forced on you, it forces you out of your comfort zone. But imposing a change on yourself requires you to push yourself out of your comfort zone. And another way to look at this idea of a comfort zone is it's the idea of predictability. It's it's being in this area where everything is predictable. I know what's going to happen. I'm comfortable here because I know what happens every single day. I know the situation. It's predictable. And the the things, these other things where you lose a job, suddenly your life is unpredictable. And so it's very, so it's a little bit getting back to what Eleanor Roosevelt said. It's scary. And the same thing with, with exercise. All of a sudden, you're, you're pushing yourself into an area that's unpredictable. I know it's very predictable what it's going to be like in my comfortable bed. I'm comfortable here. And I'm pushing myself into this thing that's unpredictable all of a sudden. And it isn't just, you know, exercise routine. That's one. But I mean, you have the idea of, of starting a business. What's going to happen? You know, I'm, I'm entering into this world of unpredictability. The, the going to your boss and asking for a raise, uh, moving. You know, these actually these things really have low penalty points, but they have a potentially great payoff because you're forcing yourself out of your predictable life. 
And of course, the obvious things are when you sit inside a comfort zone and everything is predictable, you don't grow, first of all. And the second thing is life goes by really, really, really fast. Because if your life is predictable and you're doing the same thing over and over and over and over every day, really interestingly, that's part of what makes life just seem to fly by because you never do anything different. It's the same thing, routine, over and over and over again. And there was a study done by Duke University a while ago that said that 47% of the actions that we take every single day are habit. That's amazing to think about. Half of your actions you take every day are habitual. Now, Habits can help us dramatically. There's a reason that those things were, are built into us because habits actually can, can make us more efficient and help us use less energy because we, we, we don't have to think as much about things. We can be, things can become habitual, like, like getting in your car and driving, for example. There are some good things about the, the habitual nature of being able to get into a car and then be able to to do that. And so there's a lot of those things again in our lives that are habitual that that but it's good. But it's important for us to find ways of getting out of the things that that shouldn't be habitual, which is in in this idea of ma- of getting out of your comfort zone and making your life less predictable. Okay, so I'm a, I want to read this thing to you cuz you're going to love this story so much. And this is <laughs> this is this was this is a newspaper article from the Zanesville Signal uh, in Illinois, uh, November 18th, 1942. You're going to love this story because I think in, in so many ways, this actually captures this whole idea of, of making your, going out of your way to make your life unpredictable. And yet, anyway, you'll, you'll, you'll get to hear the story. The headline on the story is Housewife in Runaway Plane Sustains Only Minor Injuries in Pancake Landing. <laughs> now, you know, there's this, there's this, I don't know, it's almost like a, a trope of the uh, of the, the the person that's never flown a plane suddenly having to fly a plane. And we've, we've even seen movies, hear stories about this idea. Well, anyway, here it is in real life. This is so great. Moline, Illinois. Mrs. B.A. Freed, 40-year-old housewife with no flying experience, said today she picked up a, quote, serious interest, <laughs> unquote, in aviation during her 20-minute solo flight in her husband's runaway plane. Her unscheduled takeoff in the two-passenger coupe occurred yesterday at the Galesburg, Illinois airport, while her husband, an employee of the Iowa and Illinois Gas and Electric Company, was cranking the motor preparatory for a flight home to Moline. And then, but somehow the brake was released, Mrs. Freed said. Suddenly, I knew the ship was moving, heading for the hangar. I grabbed for the wheel and pushed a button. I guess it was the throttle. I missed the hanger all right and thanked my stars for that. Then I looked out. I was up in the air and climbing higher. (laughs) I tried to remember how my husband drove the thing, said Mrs. Freed, but I was in the wrong seat and everything I did seemed to be backwards. I crawled over to the driver's seat and eased up on the wheel. I was in a sort of daze, I guess, but the plane stopped going up and it wasn't coming down either. The thing steered just like a car, I found, said Mrs. Freed. I kept it going around in a big circle and wondered how I'd ever get it down. I don't know how long it took me to work up the nerve enough to try landing. I experimented with the wheel. Okay. The plane plane swooped toward the landing field. It leveled off, but hit the ground with a smack and bounced almost 30 feet into the air again. I yanked out the throttle and up she went, said Mrs. Freed. I didn't think I'd ever want to try that again, but I did. The plane came over to the field overshot 
then dipped sharply, cutting the tassels off a cornfield. Then, oh, the nose wheel snapped off and the plane skidded to a pancake landing. Mrs. Freed suffered only minor cuts and bruises. Okay, that's a great story. So you have this this woman who's sitting in a plane. I, I, I can't even imagine how this actually happened, but apparently it did. She's sitting in a plane. All of a sudden, the plane starts moving, and all of a sudden, she's up in the air flying the plane. Now, she, as it said here, she'd seen her husband fly it a little bit, so she kind of knew she'd seen some of the motions and somehow managed to figure it out, but then <laughs> went through a cornfield and the whole thing and ripped off the front wheel of the plane, which, it, it, which is pretty intense. I mean, that's an intense experience to go through. And you can imagine being in that situation where you're having to figure out how to land this thing. And then when you do, you basically crash it. You hurt yourself. You somehow walk away from it, although you've severely damaged the plane, broken the wheel off, pancake landing, uh, skidding to a stop. Now, but okay. Now, that's the story. And of course, our, you know, we're sitting there, the, the focus of the story is it's amazing that this woman, you know, managed to do this and flew this plane and, and, and managed to get it down onto the ground. And, and you know, there, there's the story, right? Okay. And that is pretty interesting. But to me, the real story is what we don't know. Because I want to ask you something, and this is the thing to think about. Because here's a this was would have been unbelievably if this happened the way they're saying it happened here, this would have been unbelievably frightening for her to be in that situation. And then at the end of it to cr- basically crash the plane and survive it. Uh, pancake landing, ripping the, the, the wheel off, grinding to a halt. Now, we don't know anything else about this lady. We don't know anything else about this story. Don't know who she was, no, no, nothing else. But here's the thing to ask. This is what's interesting to me. If we went back to this lady a year later and she told us that it scared her so much, she never got in a plane again, that wouldn't surprise us. Or... If we went back a year later and we found out that it was such a thrilling experience, she went and got her license and now flies more than her husband, that wouldn't surprise us either. It's important for us to, in some symbolic way, do this same thing. Get in that plane and get up in the air. So often, when we have these big radical changes that happen in our lives, for example, the one that we brought up a little while ago of losing a job, we probably all know people, and maybe even ourselves, that have had an experience like that. And we look back five years later and say, Losing that job, looking back, was one of the best things that ever happened to me. Like it wouldn't surprise us if we heard this lady say, getting caught in that uncontrolled plane and going through that crash was one of the best things that ever happened to me. It wouldn't surprise us at all if she told us that later in life. And it goes for all these other things too, where we step into the world of unpredictability. If you start a business... And that business fails. We walk into that world of unpredictability. And we start that business. And we don't know what to expect. And we have all these unknowns. We have to figure out all these different things. And we find ourselves dealing with things we never and never even imagined before. And even if it fails, 10 years later, you would look back at that and tell yourself, that was one of the best things I ever did was starting that business. I learned so much. I grew so much. So many things happened that changed my life. Same thing with, same thing with moving. 
that move, move to a new place. I didn't know anybody. It was a totally new experience. I didn't know the area. I didn't know people. I didn't know what it was going to be like. But putting myself in that unpredictable situation was one of the best things that ever happened to me. And even something as simple as asking for a raise. What are the penalty points involved with that? What's the worst thing that can happen? They say no. And yet the benefit on the other side is, is, a, is great. What stops us from doing it? Yes, comfort zone, but ultimately it's this whole idea of unpredictability. We want to be in this predictable area. We want to be firmly on the ground, sitting in that safe seat. We don't want to be all of a sudden out of control, in the air. Nobody knows, I don't know how to run this thing. How are we going to get this thing down on the ground? And yet sometimes we need to force ourselves into those situations where I'm in the air and I got to learn to fly while I'm flying. Because that's that right there is where growth happens. And like I said before, it wouldn't surprise us if we went back to this lady and it, it, 20 years later and found out that she was one of the most experienced pilots in the area because she, she after that experience, she thought this was one of the most thrilling things that ever happened to me. I got to get my license. That was awesome. I want to do that again. Yeah, I broke the plane. I busted the plane on the way when I landed. But wow, that was so cool. Being in the air and, and controlling that thing it was such a thrill. And it's important for us when we know that these big changes that we don't, we don't like the unpredictability. I don't, don't like the unpredictability of losing my job. I don't like the unpredictability of, of, going through a move. I don't like the unpredictability of being out at five o'clock in the morning and running and going to the gym and I don't know what it's going to be like there and I don't know who I'm going to see and I don't know what's going to happen. We don't like those things, but those are almost always the things that we look back on and think, wow, I'm so glad I did that. That changed everything for me. So the message today, looking at this how, the headline, housewife in runaway plane sustains only minor injuries in pancake landing. Stepping into the world of unpredictability, probably only going to sustain at worst only minor injuries. And yet the payoff on the other side is so awesome. Find a way today, just like Eleanor, Eleanor Roosevelt said, do something that scares you. Do something that scares you every day. Or do something that makes you uncomfortable every single day. Because the injuries, if there are any, will probably be very minor. But the potential rewards are so great. Thank you for joining us on another Thick and Mystic Moment. We hope today's episode has sparked your curiosity and ignited the flames of change within you. Remember, you're not alone on this journey. Stay connected with the Thick and Mystic Moment on all major social media platforms. Please come and share your thoughts with us and share the podcast with your friends and anyone else seeking transformation in their life. This is Robert John Hadfield signing off. And remember, do something different today. Oh,